Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. Today we're going to look at Stable Swarm. So this is the UI that if you're not into Comfy and you're like, I just don't want to look at those graphs, I hate noodles, whatever is, whatever is going on with it and you don't like Comfy and you want to stick with Automatic 11.11 simply for that reason, this is your solution. So this allows you to take a Comfy graph and have a different front end for it. So it's very simple. All you do is load in the Comfy graph that you want and it'll expose certain parts. So I'm gonna talk you through kind of how this works. Now there's a lot to this product. So initially it just looks like it's just a simple UI, but it does other things like you can talk to other endpoints. So if you have a different computer in your house that's running all of your Comfy backend, for example, this can be your front end. You can also use it against other servers. And then it has a lot of tools too, like doing XY plots. If you want to do a comparison of different values, and it'll create a separate web page just to look at that. So it's very cool. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction to that and see what you think. Okay, so here you go, a standard Comfy graph, just like we're all used to looking at. And there's nothing really special about it. I do have uh, the Inspire Pack Global Seed here, just because I like that control. So I don't have to fix or randomize different controls, different things. But it's pretty basic. This is my standard SDXL template here uh, that uh, you guys can get in the community area on YouTube here for my channel. Again, thank you for your support. I just go ahead and grab that. And it's kind of a messy, messy graph. It's a thing that everybody hates about uh, about this product is there's noodles freaking everywhere. And this is this is interesting because we do an upscale by four times and then we set it to a quarter of its size and then we upscale it again. So this is called a super resolution and it gives a lot more detail to the ending image. So why do you care? Like, what's the big deal? Well, the neat thing is we can go to the generate tab and here is all you see. You see the positive prompt. You see any of these parameters you want to play with the steps of the CFG or something like that, or you want to change your sampler or you want to change the scheduler, whatever. You can do all that from right here. So you don't have to stare at those noodles if you don't want to. And then down here under advanced are all the other controls or nodes that are on that page or in this graph. So if you're looking for something specific, like say the denoise here for this first K sampler, if we go back over here, we can find the K sampler and sure enough, here's the denoise. So we can go ahead and change that right from here. So if you're a person who really doesn't like the node interface, once you get your node graph done, you can just use this. And again, this works a lot like Comfy in all the other respects. So if you hide this, so you're asking yourself, how do you make more of these controls available? And that's actually pretty simple. You just simply use primitives. So for example, if we want to show denoise up at the top, let's go ahead and add denoise as something that is an input. So now it's here. I just pull this out and I'm going to go add node. I have a whole lot of nodes here, so don't worry about that, but you're going to find utils and you're going to go down and find primitive. Uh, and here I'm just going to rename it uh, because it does pay attention to that denoise. Now, if I go, ha go ahead and go back, now there's actually a menu up here that I had minimized for this. You need to click use this workflow in the generate tab. If you go back, you'll notice that now denoise is now one of the interface items that you see. So I usually collapse this because I don't typically change those things. Those are things that once they're set, they're good, but I might change denoise. I might play with other things like this. Uh, so this gives you the option to take your huge graph and make it into a nice user interface. There's also a server tab here. And in here, you can see that I'm running it locally here. And if you had this elsewhere in your house, another laptop or another machine, you could certainly use it this way. Now there's a lot of other places where you can put your comfy back end and you can use this as the front end. There's other options too for server configurations and so on. Now, if you're a person who loves settings under user, you're gonna see that there are some user settings here, but if you're really big into them, like the automatic 11.11 fans, under parameter configurations, you have everything you could dream of. And there's a lot of really neat things in here too, like the free U and uh, other aspects like dynamic thresholding. If you want a really high CFG, but want it to not be all overbaked, you can fix that down here too. So there's a lot of other options. If you don't want to put them in the graph, you can control it this way. I tend not to use these. However, I do tend to like to uh, get rid of the prompt every so often. Uh, and you'll notice that too, I have moved some of these things like images list to the advanced versions. So when you're ready to go, you just click generate like you would normally, and it will go ahead and show you the process as it's unfolding. Now, there's some other tools too under quick tools. So if you want to interrupt the session and so on, if you are in the middle of generating, you can always use this interrupt button here. I'm not sure why mine is not red, but normally this is red so you can see it. If you want to disable the custom workflow, you can do that from down here. If you want to pick a different model, you can use the drop down here. So there's a lot of really nice things that are right in here. You also have the ability to look through all your models. If you have other models, if you have LORAs, you can look through those in different embeddings, control nets, and even tools here. Under tools, there's actually a really great grid generator which will generate a grid of different values. If you want to have X on one axis and Y in another, it'll go ahead and create a separate website that you can go to to watch that being created. 
And that's pretty great because then it's not a small interface. Overall, it's a fantastic product and I'm really excited to finally get a chance to show it to you. So if you're wanting to get away from your comfy graph, here's your opportunity to finally do so. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. I will put the graph in the community area uh, for everyone who sponsors the channel. So really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for helping me out. I couldn't do this without you and I really appreciate you. So I'm going to be gone this next Saturday, so I will not be around for a live stream, but we'll be picking it up the next week after that. So I try and stream at 1030 or so on Saturday mornings, Central Standard Time, Milwaukee time, Chicago time. So I will see you next Saturday and I'll get some more videos out very quickly. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.